Hello, I'm Tracy Freeland with Reuters, and I'm here with George Soros and Rob Johnson of the Institute for New Economic Thinking, known as INET. Mr. Soros, in the conversation that we just had, you mentioned INET as the philanthropic project in the past year that you're the most proud of. What is it? Well, it, it, it's uh, an attempt to encourage economists to rethink the very f foundations of economics, because it turns out that macroeconomic theory has broken down. The financial crisis has shown that it's quite inadequate in making any kind of predictions about the future. And it has to be rethought from its fundamentals uh, because economics has tried to be a hard science like uh, like uh, uh, physics uh, and the problem that it confronts is a different one because it's, uh, it, what it deals with is uh, society, human beings and the thinking of human beings comes into the uh, uh, into the course of events, and therefore uh, uh, events with human participants it simply cannot be predicted. Not as predictable. There's a, 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 an uncertainty involved that uh, economics has. Uh, Ignored. So rethinking economics from scratch is quite a radical project. Uh, how have academic economists responded to this idea? Um, th there's a widespread recognition that something is wrong. Exactly what it is and how fundamental you have to be uh, is very much a matter of d debate. Uh, I have my own views which are, uh, as I express them, but that's not necessarily Is shared. Is the institute designed to push your ideas? No, the, the, uh, I'm in a very strange position of being the financial sponsor and at the same time uh, the protagonist of a particular point of view. And you don't worry there's a conflict there? But there is a conflict there, which I fully recognize, and uh, I keep out of the running of the institute uh, I provide the financial support, but then the institute is on its own. But it's doing very well under the direction of Rob Johnson. Uh, so Rob, this is a huge project. In practical terms, what are you actually doing? Well, a number of things. First of all, I'm raising money because there's a broad base of support worldwide. The enthusiasm George spoke about does not just emanate from George, but from people so throughout Mr. the Soros's world. So Mr. Soros' checkbook is not enough? Uh, how would I say? Uh, it certainly could be enough financially, but I think the institution is strengthened by having a broader base of support. And uh, I, I'm very, very fiercely focused on garnering that other support. Secondly, we're in the process of grant making right now. We received over 520 applications for grants. We've narrowed it down to the semifinalists, which is roughly 67 candidates. And the governing board will meet September 28th, and in early October we'll announce the winners of the first round of several million dollars of grants, which address questions like equity and growth, financial instability, the role of the state, the so-called political economy, uh, advocating economic history, reinvigorating awareness of history of economic thought, and many other themes as well. And so the main job of the Institute is going to be to give grants to scholars? I think it's a number of things. There's a curriculum committee that's now underway looking at economic curriculums both here and abroad. I believe there'll be institutes in various countries around the world and embedded within academic institutions that create a source of strength. We will have convenings, small meetings which are topical and plenary meetings. The next one will be at Bretton Woods, New Hampshire in April of 2011. Uh, and then the grant making process. And we're also somewhat unsatisfied with the state of economics as revealed by the crisis. So we will have task force groups of scholars that emanate from INET with thematic direction coming from our board. How will you determine success? 
How, how do you measure? How do you figure out if you've done a good job? Uh, I would say if we start to see the mapping between what is under study in economics and morally important problems of the day converge. We've had a period... So does that mean, Rob, you think economics is not currently focused on the right problems? I think they have been, as Paul Samuelson said, economists no longer are talking to the world. They're just talking to each other. They've retreated to a monastery and become fascinated with the technical details of mathematics and statistics rather than addressing those important problems. I already asked Mr. Soros what the response from within the academy, from you know, within really the, vested, the groups that really have a vested interest in the status quo, what has the response been from your perspective? Uh, I would say there are two poles. One is enthusiasm, a sense of liberation that someone is going to come in and support and fund new directions and try to change the fulcrum. The other side, I wouldn't say, is hardened in its opposition, but they actually think they embody change. And so they say, what, what need is there for you? We're already on the track, but from my eyes, they're not moving far enough or fast enough. And what are the practical consequences, maybe the practical benefits um, that you hope this work will bring? You know, we've just had hundreds of people listening to Mr. Soros asking investing questions. Mr. Soros pointed a pretty bleak uh, portrait of where the world economy is. Are, 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 you gonna, are you hoping to produce thinking which is actionable, which changes yes. the world? Yes. Well, let's start with Mr. Soros talked about financial instability. And if you believe in the models that have been promoted by academia, it implies what Roman Friedman calls the illusion of stability. The regulatory regime that flows from that is predicated on false premises. It's predicated on models that don't describe how the world actually behaves. So if we go back to the first principles and arrive at structures, models, or perceptions of the financial markets that do address the boom, bust, and bubbles, as Charles Kinderberg called, manias, panics, and crashes, then perhaps a regulatory regime can be designed where, what do you say, society is safer or less bandied about by the violence that sometimes takes place in financial markets. And Mr. Soros, in conclusion, what's your answer to that question? How, how, how will you determine whether or not INET is a success? Um, I think that it already, uh, just by existing, is a success because it, it has established th that or recognized that that uh, the present, the current paradigm has failed. Uh, now you have to evolve a new way of looking at economic problems. That's a, that's going to be a much longer uh, uh, process. And uh, I, you can't expect uh, really a, a new body of, of uh, thinking to emerge uh, in less than a decade. Mr. Soros, so much of your philanthropy has been very practical and very much about having a very practical, immediate impact on people's lives, you know, from scholarship programs to direct aid in times of crisis. What practical impact will this program have on people's lives? Uh, I, I think it will have tremendous impact because uh, 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 the economy is the foundation of uh, uh, our existence, so to speak, and uh, how it is run, uh, whether you have a, a global economy or uh, um, it breaks down into national units, uh, whether it is um, uh, 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 prosperous or whether you are in uh, a financial crisis, it determines people's lives. Thank you very much, Mr. Soros. Thank you very much, Rob.